been here tying the soft touch rim. Uh, I've done a lot of pictures and a step by step on my blog. But now I'm just going to show people how to actually tie it on a video. Um, as you can see, I've got a merger hook here. I've used all sorts of hooks, cameras and B100s, but uh, I've had seen some of these off uh, John Tyzak on the Fish On team. They're, um, they're, of, they're called the Curved River Academy hook. This one is a size 14, it's a bit bigger, it's quite a decent size, uh, but I have been using the 16 uh, for the more finicky fish. Um, what I do like about these hooks, they're black, not too black, they're like a black nickelly, and uh, the core of a shrimp has got that black look through it. But the main, my main reason why I like these, the, the, shoot, the hook is really sharp, and it's got a long shank hook. Once you deep, once you set these hooks home, they're not going to bounce out. So there you go. Next bit, I'm just going to thread it up, you don't have to be neat here. Just put a layer base on, down to the bend of the hook, trim off. This is, uh, I don't use scissors anymore, this is actually a razor blade, a cutthroat, what I use for, for having a shave with. Um, they're about seven quid off eBay with 200 blades. Absolutely best thing I've ever bought. You just no messing around with expensive scissors. Slice through. This one I'm going to put a touch of weight on. I have been fishing them um, with no weight whatsoever, which can get a really good effective look. And also with a just this touch of weight, just sends it down. I have been fishing them with a uh, heavy point fly to drag these down. So all I'm doing is I've gone on top of the hook shank and just go round the bend just slightly. It's also raised the profile of the hook more like the natural shrimp. Now this here, rather than using a knife, I've cut it off this thread. Just ping straight through it like it's like cheese wire. Um, this thread, it's I use it. For, in fact, I've used it for about two or three years for pipe flies. Everything, it's that strong. It's like you could cut cheese with it. And it's really fine as well, so it really beds in. Um, it's the fish on. For doing a batch of it. As in colours, I'm using green here, but it beds in really well. Right, next part. I'm going to dub, put some dubbing on. I have been using all sorts of different dubbing, but um, the, what I have found best for dub is with um, with some um, the actual white off a squirrel pelt. This is a red squirrel pelt. Um, it's very very soft. It adds to the soft touch. Underneath the white you've got a grey material which is very very close to the real colour of the shrimp. So I have used that. But for now, for ease of showing on the video, I'm going to use just a bit of glister dub it's easier to see. They do look effective with the glistered up but in my fishing I'm more into me really looking trying to get the natural of the actual natural rather than an attractor. So dub on nice and white. I made the right balls up of that. Take that off. My message has lost me dubbing me uh, pink stuff. 
over the top. Right. And the dub. Dub it quite tight, keep it nice and tight. and trim that off. Obviously you can experiment with um, all sorts of dubbing. Some of them look amazing but as in the whole reason of this ply was brought on by a soft touch watching Grayling it uh, eject flies with uh, really heavy bombs and with hard coated backs and I've actually seen grayling just ejecting them as soon as they enter the mouth I think we lose a lot of fish by that so the soft touch come from using the silicon right tie off that I've lost my tying off tool, so I've got to learn how to tie them off by hand. So, what you've got to do here, that's very important, the top of here, we're going to try and get, when we apply the silicon, you don't want these hairs sticking up. As you can see, as I've been working through it, I've been constantly pulling my fingers, pushing it down. A good method that I've come across from doing these is get a tiny bit of silicon on your finger, rub it in, and just put it on top, and it basically sticks the top down. It's looking more like a shrimp now. Right, the next part we all, a lot of experienced tires will know how to tie something like that. The problem we've got with it a lot is learning how to use the silicon. I'm scrubbing out the feet here on the shrimp. That is very important for me. These flies that are invented that look exactly the same sometimes don't fish at all because they haven't got that natural look. So I've scrubbed out that. Right, the next part is applying the silicon. I've um, used a lot of different silicons. Um, Fish on have actually sent me um, some silicon they've been trying to use to see what it's like. It's, uh, it's all safe for fish, it's got no additives in um, that can leak into the water, whatever. Basically, it's, it's safe stuff. And then what I found with the Fish on. Uh, the stuff they've purchased, it's very, very light, the, the real colour of a shrimp. I've been using, um, I've, I've filled my fish tank at home with real shrimps out of the river and I've been matching them up. Uh, that's anal for you. Um, and it's got a good, good milky tinge to it. My miss is laughing at the milky tinge. Right, it comes, the fish on comes in a tube, um, you cut the end off, this one I've cut it for very small flies, I've also put some in my, in my syringe, this is the thicker size I'm using for the bigger flies, so this is the bit that people ask, just push here. What you find is people say to me, oh, my silicon's dried out. Silicon will only dry in air, and it'll probably only go a couple of mil down. So, right, usually, I turn the vise around the other way now to apply the silicon with my right hand. But I can't do that because the camera, so we'd have to try to do it left-handed. So it might not be as good as normal. Um, so... What you've got to do, very important, 
where people go wrong applying the silicon. You've got to lay it on top. You're not pushing in to the fly. At this stage, all you want to do is more or less let it drop onto the top. I start off, you find when you first start pushing the syringe, you get a bit of a bubble on there. A bit of a big piece of silicon on the front. So I just lay it on just behind the eye. And I'll show you why after. So I'll just lay it on now. So, excuse me if this is a bad end. So you go on and you, if you notice, I've just laid that on straight on top. It's not the best. I've shook my hand shook because I'm using my left hand on the side. The good thing about this. I'll show you now, I could actually build that into what I want now. But now, if you've ballsed it up, straight finger off, rub it off, start again. Trust me, I've done it loads of times. Same again. Let's see, laying. Laying it on top as you get to the base, just pull off. So, there we are, that is absolutely laid on perfect. Not bad for my left hand. So, the next stage now, this is where it, the fly comes into, the, into its own, where there's no other fly like it. Yes, we've got the soft touch on the top. There is other stuff, people put on rubber bands, you know, anything on top of uh, shrimps. But now the important bit is to blend this silicon into the dubbing. I've just gone behind the hoop there with my first bit. So the first thing I'll do is just get that and pull it over. And if you really want to go for it, The real anals, two little prongs off the front made with the silicon. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to tease the silicon. You don't want to touch the top. If you touch the top of that, the whole fly is out. You might as well start again. We want to smooth back on the top. You're actually teasing in if you can see right on the edge there so I'll have a go if you can find if you do it quite quick quite quick you get a lot of legs created from the actual silicon itself I'll try and do it from the side I usually so you can see hard to see without spinning it round I've built that right down the fly now if you notice on a real shim at the back I try not to do too much pulling down blending in on the top you want this part of the shrimp higher than the rest. So you do that by building just the front edge. So you're getting a pronounced bump. You'll see your silicon actually moving into the legs. Yeah, that's what you want. You get that silicon on your legs. Let's give it that sort of the whole fly there. It's soft. So now If you notice on a real shrimp, I'll mess that up a bit there. Am I slipping? If you notice on a real shrimp, the uh, take a bit off there. On a real shrimp, the legs in the middle. There's not many. So when the silicon's blended in, 
you can I just put my little pecking tool through and make it quite not as bushy there. So then you want to spike out the legs. I made a bit of a bulge up at the front there because I'm finding it hard to do at this angle with the camera. But there you go. We've got a fly there, nearly done. Right, this is another little touch I've done. I've done that many of them. And you're trying everything to get it right. Here I've got black silicon. Um, I suppose you could use a bit of nail varnish. I've tried everything. And what I do here, I just get a bit of the black silicon. See if I can put it on something. Put it on my blade to show you. A bit of black silicon. And now we're going to put the eyes on. These are for the people who really, really like to get realistic. You get a little dot and you get a little spike off the end of your needle. The eyes on a shrimp are very small and you're right at the front. Dot the silicon on. And that will give you your eyes. I've actually put a tiny bit too much on that one for me. Um, but what I've found is when I've been fishing, I've actually put silicon, black silicon, onto the fly. I've actually found it stays on because it blends in, so it doesn't even come off at all. So, there you go. That's the finished jobby. Um, the whole idea was grayling. I've been deep hooking grayling. If I aren't looking what I'm doing, some of the actual takes I've been doing, I've been having a look up in the air, um, daydreaming. And uh, I've actually looked round, hooked a fish, and I've deep hooked grayling in the, in the top of the mouth. So always beware on you've got to stay on your bites because these do actually get taken for the real thing. As soon as they, they obviously look really effective, but that's what they were made for. They were made for the soft, soft touch trees, and they're actually taking these down for the real. So we're uh, tight lines, everybody. I hope you get some fish that I have. I've got. These are coming off in the millions on the dove. Uh, me and John Tyzak have been testing them. And now uh, we've been hooking some decent fish this season. Um, another method someone told me, John Pease mentioned the other day on the fish on boys. He said put a, um, put a little uh, tungsten bead in the middle and build that through if you want to get some extra weight, get it down. Uh, there's going to be lots of options for people to try but that's basically the standard one. Um, use the bally off a squirrel on the white you've got the grey inside there which really does have a, it makes it's a really good colour to blend through so you get the translucent. So squirrel pink again pink looks really well um, try what dubbins you want. Tight lines